You are watching Event Horizon. This is the place where people who want to achieve something in life come to get inspiration. Subscribe to our channel for daily videos. What's wrong with having a lot of stuff? Before immersing into the depths of a minimalist lifestyle, Fumio Sasaki tells several stories about people who transformed their lives by disposing of things they used to consider paramount. Most of them had too many belongings piled up in their apartments for years. But after becoming minimalists, they kept essentials to a minimum. Quite often, that's all they needed. But how do they feel about their minimalist lifestyle? The answer can surprise you. They start seeing themselves more clearly by getting rid of things. In the beginning, being happy with minimal belongings is mind-blowing because many people are programmed to evaluate each other by the solidity of their wealth. We tend to believe that having more things will preserve stability or tell other people something like, can you see how much I love my stuff? You may protest that attachment to material items isn't harmful, but here's a thing. When filling our lives with goods, we often infuse them with false meaning. Thus, we think of them as the only source of genuine happiness. Where can this material-based happiness lead us? After a while, we become less and less satisfied with what we have. Further, we start assessing the possessions of people we know and comparing our joys with theirs. There's no need to say that the less wealthy you are, the more pathetic you feel in a world of tangible delight. Thus, freeing space, we dispose of noise and imposed ideas of pure happiness. After exploring this candid, apple pie order and relaxing summary, you'll learn working techniques helpful to kick the habit of cluttering. Explore a secret recipe for a happy life in rational zen. People gravitate toward minimalism from the very beginning of their lives. Think about it, no one is born owning dozens of garden gnomes or guitar picks. Our worth is not the sum of our belongings. Possessions can make us happy only for brief periods. Unnecessary material objects suck up our time, our energy, and our freedom. When you possess much stuff, you struggle with underlying genuine essentials. Remember arriving late to an important meeting because of stumbling into piles of clothing scattered around your apartment? As innocent as it might seem, any situation provokes a great deal of stress and discomfort. Your belongings play against you, even though you felt joy when purchasing them. And material items aren't the only things cluttering our lives. Overloaded with information from all news sources possible, our minds also desperately need a thorough cleanup. Let's have a peek at the most typical cons of a maximalist lifestyle. You struggle to find things. You feel overwhelmed and cannot concentrate. You can't fully relax in a messy space. You don't enjoy your routine because it's overloaded with stuff. You're tired of things and see how exciting life passes by you. Your life reminds you of permanent chaos, which you struggle to control. Before becoming a minimalist, Fumio Sasaki felt constantly exhausted, drank too much alcohol, could perform one task for donkey's years, and was full of fish stories about the reasons for his disordered lifestyle. He could blame everything from work overload to lack of free space, but not excessive possessions in his misery. As it turned out later, Fumio didn't need a brand new smartphone or an enormous number of books. Instead, he needed other people's attention and respect. Remember that owning less is not the final destination. It is your way of searching for the genuine treasures that make your soul sing and be noticed by others. After getting rid of almost everything he owned, Fumio Sasaki felt a relief he had never felt before. Along with this comfort came inspiration, energy, and established life goals. But first things first. Let's explore why some people become true hoarders. Let's admit it, when buying new things, we believe they'll make us happier. 
Although there's nothing wrong with such an approach, there's one but. Due to the chain reaction of brief delights, we want to have more and more. But here's the problem. We already had what we needed the most initially. And still, we accumulate new stuff because yesterday's inspiring purchase turns a habitual element into the next day. The glory of acquisition starts to dim with use, eventually changing to boredom as the item no longer elicits even a bit of excitement. This is the pattern of everything in our lives. The routineization of happiness depends a lot on the brain's chemistry. Remarkably, we engage ourselves in this spiral of consumerism willingly. Our memory and emotions function so that we don't focus on remembering that new things eventually become lifeless. Ordering a three-story hamburger, the enormous fries, Coke, baked dessert, and ice cream hungry, you suggest that you can easily eat it all and feel amazing. But as it turns out, a burger and some fries are your limits, yet you continue to eat. That's the trap of predicting future feelings in the current moment, which most maximalists usually do. Another reason for having many goods lies in the specifics of our self-esteem formation. When people depend on each other's support, approval, and sympathy, they often select material objects to transmit their worthiness to achieve it. Expressing interests and priorities through stuff is normal. However, your inadequately expanding stash of belongings steals your energy and time. Fumio Sasaki is sure that people are social animals and constantly need to validate their self-worth with stuff. However, letting things get out of control is too easy, and so is the transformation from an owner of things to their captive. In Japanese culture, the phenomenon of danchari, aka the art of discarding excessive things and living a nomadic lifestyle, inspires people to see their relations with things in a new light. Decluttered life brings more joy and clarity of senses, and you can benefit from this change whenever you are. So let's explore working techniques and tips for living a more spacious and happy life. Reject the assumption that you cannot get rid of things. Reduce items that you possess in a variety. Open your drawer and you'll probably notice two corkscrews or duplicates of other kitchen supplies. Keep only one of each. Part with items only kept because they're visually appealing. If you feel you cannot live without that old pair of leather topsiders you haven't worn for 10 years, take a photo of them. This technique allows you to preserve memory without piling up belongings you no longer use. A small tip, keep pictures digital. Free up as much physical space as possible. Learn the difference between eliminating things and their systemization. Forget the favorite of all people, I'll do it tomorrow. If you don't throw something away now, you probably won't do it later. Minimalism is a tool and not a final destination. After reducing things, you are free of material burden and can start to determine what your non-materialistic goals are. Good news alert! Minimalists do not sleep on the floor with no furniture in the room. Everyone can change their lifestyle and become a minimalist. You'll be amazed how much decluttering can change your life. Saying goodbye to things saves time makes you more organized, allows you to enjoy your routine, and grants you freedom of movement. Surprisingly, possessing less can transform behavioral and communication patterns. For example, people are often hardcore introverts because of their stuff and untidy apartments, and not because they're comfortable with being alone. Now, let's look at a mass media example. Here and there, advertisements bombard our minds, telling us that we're either too far from being the perfect version of ourselves or we'll be beyond happy if we buy the third awesomely designed coffee pot. And this media noise steals time and distracts us. But the minute we learn it's an empty shell, we learn how to make time work for us. Isn't it better to need less and know precisely what you need to buy, not spend the entire day wandering around supermarkets in the neighborhood? 
As a minimalist, you'll have specific selection criteria. Similarly, you won't have to spend long hours cleaning. The lack of tiny details and piles of things is a key to saying goodbye to dust. More importantly, we're miserable when we're busy. Scientists have proven that we cannot be in good spirits without having time for self-reflection and relaxation. Take a breather at a neighborhood coffee shop. Stop typing away at your computer and give yourself a moment to take a deep breath. Happiness is actually all around us. We just need time to find it. Happiness comes hand in hand with self-organization and calmness. For example, when your apartment is clean and you are neatly dressed, you don't get annoyed over trifles and feel a boost of confidence to conquer professional heights and communicate with others. We all know this fairy tale about getting a well-paid job or buying a dream house and becoming happy. But how many such lucky people do we know? However, the formula for joy is more complex. It is impossible to become content and preserve this state due to an accomplishment or a purchase. Psychologists believe that 40% of our good spirits depend on our everyday actions, while genetics and changing events in life predetermine the rest. Minimalism opens doors to improving our daily actions crucial for happiness. Fumio Sasaki reveals that a minimalist lifestyle has transformed his perception of things worth appreciation. Thus, you're on the right path when you're ready to grasp the value of non-materialistic pleasures, such as a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with a friend or observing a beautiful sunset. Conclusion We accumulate things because we want to send the world a certain message about ourselves but eventually we add new debris to a never-ending maze. Minimalism is a shield that protects us from external influences and allows us to see what's best for us. Minimalists live without their hands tied by their possessions. Moreover, they have this distilled peace of mind and enjoy the present moment without looking back or being distracted by the uncertainty of the future. So why don't you allow yourself to be happy Try this. Look around your apartment and randomly pick three things. Then, try to recall the last time you used each. If you haven't within a month, discard it immediately. Keep things that resonate with your heart. Become the master of cost-effectiveness. Once we reduce possessions, we improve our financial situation. Share this video with your friends and family. What are your thoughts on this and let us know down in the comments. We'll be happy to discuss. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.